Now, she appeared both plausible and rather courageous. The anonymous author of The Gay Girl in Damascus blog site swiftly gathered an international following for her no-holds-barred account of the uprising in Syria and the dangers of being gay in a country which outlaws homosexuality. Her plight became so well-known, the US State Department demanded answers from the Syrians about her whereabouts. Well, now we know where she is, except she's not a she, not Syrian, and not even gay. The blogger is, in fact, a married American, Tom McMaster, who is studying at Edinburgh University. He's currently in Istanbul, from where he defended the hoax. What I don't regret is the fact that I did, hopefully, bring a good bit of attention to real human rights abuses in Syria, the real situation that real people are facing, even if through a fictional voice. I mean, to a large extent, it was almost as though I were writing a novel. Well, Mr McMaster has now had his internet account suspended by the university, whilst the blogosphere is very far from happy about what happened. A quick survey of the social networking site Twitter reveals widespread fury at Mr McMaster's behaviour, especially from people claiming to be genuine Syrian bloggers. With me now is Dr Rupa Huck, a senior lecturer in sociology at Kingston University and a blogger herself. What, what do you make of this? I mean, would you be upset to find this, this has happened? And I do think the whole thing is sad all round. I mean, it's very dismaying that um, this, as you say, it's turned out to be quite an anti-climax who the identity of this blogger is. And I think the fact of the matter is that the internet for a lot of us is our main medium of communication now. But it does have its downsides, and that is that sort of every Tom, Dick or Harriet can get the megaphone for themselves and broadcast themselves. So I think we just have to treat everything that we see on the internet with a large degree of... Skepticism, but his defence is that he's bringing to light real human rights abuses. And, of course, the awful thing is that the lure is very strong. I mean, fancy a gay lesbian blogger in, in Damascus under that terrible oppression of, you know, anti-homosexual uh, legislation and blogging this remarkable material. He, he really had us on toast. I mean, the lure being strong is probably the key to it, because, I mean, I, I have a bit of a two-bit blog myself. And it does get very addictive to look at the hits and look who's sort of looking at it. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. The volume of stuff on the internet is huge, isn't it? And most stuff on the internet goes undetected and people are ranting away to themselves. Because of the historical moment that this, and the choice of subject matter, this one, I think it went up to 850,000 views. So the situation probably got out of control for this bloke. And he was probably quite flattered by the attention. And then it turns into a kind of... I, I suppose there is, an, uh, there is an upside to this, and that is maybe the authorities in Syria actually got themselves into a terrible tangle looking for this wretched lesbian. Um, <laughs> could be the case. I mean, the thing is, yeah, the situation in Syria, we shouldn't underestimate the gravity of it. Obviously, you know, there's uh, tanks and artilleries and shelling and firing, and I don't know precisely, I'm not an expert on that subject. So, I mean, to people on the ground in Syria, probably a person in Edinburgh doing a blog, you know, they might have bigger fish to fry mm. than that, but... Well, I, I, imagine... I suppose the real issue now is, I mean, is there something different about the internet? Should we accept that it's a good place to tell lies, it's a wonderful place to dress up in pantomime costume and pretend you're somebody else, um, or, or, or should the same standards of, of kind of journalistic activity almost apply? I mean, I guess impersonation has been around for a long time. That's not a new internet phenomenon, but then it's been taken into this digital playground. So, I mean... People of a certain age may remember Millie Vanilli, which was a pop group. I think the actual identity of the people making the songs was two unphotogenic white blokes from Belgium. But the people fronting the group were two very good-looking, be-dreadlocked, <laughs> uh, crotch-thrusting black guys. And then they were sort of unmasked, whereas kind of, I suppose, with the... Inter and remember a few years ago, there was the medical student from Scotland as well, I believe, who had sort of gone through school again as a, quite a mature yes. chap. So, I mean, impersonation is not new, but I suppose it's easier done on the internet because, as I say, every Tom, Dick or Harriet can have their say. Um, so, blog consumer beware. I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah, read, take everything with a skip of salt. Rupert Huck, thank you very much indeed for coming in.